Anybody on? John? There's a caller. No. You gotta you might have to unmute something. Let me see you got Lewis. Like. Yeah, I did I I did unmute the O one two five and the one seven nine seven. One seven nine seven is me. All right, good Lewis. You're all set. You're in. <clears throat> If you see seven seven four eight Ashley, that's John D. Simone. Okay. Seven seven four eight will be his last four digits. Okay. I should call him from my house. For John and Jean. You got John. You got the last four digits of John's number. He'll be calling. Oh, we uh, have the uh, the seven seven four eight. That was Decimony. John Decimony. All right, he's in. I just allowed him to speak. John, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Okay. All right. Ashley, can you rename phone numbers to actual names as the host? No, it's not allowing me. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the O one two five. That was H Y M. Yes, that's Mike Scannell with H Y M. The seven seven four eight. That was John D. Simone. I'm in. Yep. The one seven nine seven. That's Lewis. Yes, ma'am. And the five eight nine two. Um, whose phone number is five eight nine two? That's me. That's Gene. Gene. Gene oh, Gene. is here. All right. All right. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Gene. Okay. Can you hear me? Because I can hear when everybody. I logged on, when I logged on, it said you will be muted. You came in as, as an attendee. Did you guys use the link that I sent you? I sent you, or did you just log in on your yeah. own? Huh. Yeah. I used the you... link to the right. Hmm. I used, I used the link you sent me. That's odd. Yeah, Maybe you, because you're calling in by phone and it's putting you automatically as an attendee somehow. I'm going to have to look into Zoom on that. But it looks like you guys are all set. Okay. Gene, anytime you want to start the meeting, it's all yours. One minute, I'm aggravated. <laughs> I'm aggravated with, with this technology. I can't. Uh, anyway, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Roll call. Roll call. Okay, Mr. Mr. Amico. Here. Here. Mr. Cerrone. Here. 
That's it. Mr. Del Vecchio? Absent. Mr. Desimone? Here. Mr. DeVoe? Absent. Mr. Giovanni? Absent. Mr. Limina? Here. And Mr. McKenna? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. The, uh, the first public hearing item on the agenda is a public hearing regarding small cell antennas. You can open a pub public hearing, Mr. McKenna, Mr. Chairman. Are there any proponents? Are there any proponents? Anybody to speak? Well, I can just, uh, this is Frank Stringy, city planner. I can just speak on behalf of the city. Uh, this We have uh, our city solicitor here also, Paul Capizzi, who drafted most of the, uh, the amendment. <laughs> And the, the reason for the amendment, I think resulted, uh, Paul can explain a little bit of me, uh, federal regulations, telecommunication regulations have changed and they require no longer than a 60 day uh, decision period on these small cell antennas. So to make the process a lot smoother and quicker, uh, the idea is to take it out of the city council's hands, a special permit and put it into the building inspector hands for approval. And they would also have to come before site plan review and comply with a number of conditions uh, imposed. And each small cell antenna would have to pay a $500 application fee. And I believe it's a $270 yearly uh, fee on top of that. Is that correct, Paul? That's correct. The, the, right now, of course, when we passed the ordinance, the telecommunications ordinance a long time ago, no one had contemplated 5G as small cell antennas. So we're trying to just streamline the ordinance so that it complies with the federal law. Right now, it's part of the permit process, which is governed by this Mass um, Zoning Act, which is Chapter 48, Section 9, which means if you file an application, the Permit Granting Authority, which is the City Council, has 65 days to hold the hearing. And then after they hold the hearing, they have 90 days to reach a decision, which is, way, which is a total of 155 days if you go to the very the very farthest point in the calendar. And that's way too long for what the federal law requires, which is 60 days to act. We also want to take it away from the council. If not, I don't mean that pejoratively because then there's, there's many more people that will have input and are likely to, in some ways, impede the implementation of, of the, the federal communication order, which requires that we do it in 60 days. So by giving it right to the city, and then putting the conditions in that we require, which I worked on with Paul Cheever, which are in the ordinance, this will have, we'll be complying with the federal law in, in telecommunications and 5G upgrades, which supposedly benefit the whole world and benefit everybody in the city. Okay. Mr. Chan. Is that it? Is that, are there any uh, opponents? Well, I'll close the side. Are the proponents closing that side? Are there any proponents? I mean, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I think you mean opponents. Are there any opponents? Are there any opponents willing to speak on this matter? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close that side of the meeting. Gentlemen, any questions? No, can we hear me? I don't hear anything. I hear you, but I hear no you. Questions. We're going to remain silent. No right? questions. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to pass the amendment as as proposed. And I'll second it. Second. Louis Charloni made the motion. John D. Simone seconded the motion. Okay. On the motion by Mr. Cerrone, seconded by Mr. DeSimone to send a favorable recommendation to the City Council regarding the small cell antenna ordinance amendment. On the, on the motion, Mr. Amico. Yes. yes. Mr. Cerrone. Yes. Mr. Del Vecchio is absent. Mr. DeSimone. I, I believe yes. Anthony joined. Oh, Anthony, are you out there, Mr. Del Vecchio? I did see his name on there, yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Giovanni is absent. Mr. Limina? 
Yes. And uh, Mr. McKenna. Yes. Okay, voted and so ordered. A favorable recommendation will go to the city council. Uh, okay, and the Anthony, second item on, on the, the agenda, call? Mr. Chairman, is the uh, uh, revised preliminary subdivision plan submitted by uh, HYM Investment Group. Uh, okay, now this isn't a public hearing, right? This is not a public hearing, no. This is a meeting just for the planning board to review the preliminary plan <coughs> and to vote on it, to approve <coughs> it, to approve it with modifications or to deny it. As you recall, they okay. were before us in uh, the fall and the planning board approved the preliminary subdivision plan uh, with conditions. So they are back before us with a revised plan uh, because if, and I will let HYM explain the reason why. Okay, go ahead HYM. I don't think we can hear him. Mike, Mike is you're, muted. Uh, you're mute. You moved it, muted. Michael, can you hear me? We can't hear you, Michael. Ashley, I see his name twice. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, you may I have just clicked on mute. mute on one of Michael's. Uh, now he disappeared. Yeah, this is. Uh... This is Jeff Heidelberg. I'm from Beals and Thomas. I'm working with uh, Mike Borowski on the uh, HYM's project on Suffolk Downs. Um, unfortunately, we had to circulate the invite, and so we're all on his name. So there's a few of us that are listed as Mike Borowski, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if I can unmute him. I'm clicking unmute on Michael's name <laughs> that I just see um, that indicates he doesn't have any sound, though. He might have muted himself. No, he's unmuted now. He's showing his phone. I think he's going to try to call in. Okay. okay. Frank, do you have a copy of this? I think he's using his phone. Plan? I do, and I sent it. I emailed it to everybody. Uh, should have received it. Is Del Vecchio on board? Is he unmuted? I thought I heard Del Vecchio was on. I he heard is, that too, but I don't, is he unmuted? He's muted. Oh, unmute him so we can hear him. Can you hear me? There you go. We hear there you. we go. Uh, Ashley, if you could unmute the last four digits of 1119, that's Mike's last Got it. four. Okay. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. yes. You're on, Michael. Uh, I should have told you my cell phone number. I was I was trying to figure out how to communicate. <laughs> I was on my phone. I could hear it, but thank you. So sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, so I'll be I'll jump right in since I, we took some time with that. Um, so good to be before everybody again. So I just thought before we just really quickly before we dive in, if it's helpful for the planning board, I could walk through what we've been up to over the last you know three or so months since we last seen you. I forgot when we last saw you. I believe it was about four months ago. Is that helpful for the planning board? Sure, that's fine. Yep. Okay. So real quickly, I, just, I did want to report that we did in uh, late January, January 30th, receive our MEPA approval. Um, so again, that's the overarching state approval for all of Suffolk Downs encompassing Boston and uh, Boston and Revere. So that was a big accomplishment, about two and a half years of, of work. Um, in addition, we, we are still working on solidifying our Boston approvals. So as you know, because of COVID-19, and, and our process in Boston had been a little bit elongated compared to Revere's, but we ran into COVID-19 and we we're, about, we we're just being scheduled for our final BPDA board hearing. And then um, you know, we ran into COVID-19. So we're hoping that once they resume public hearings in Boston, that we would be one of the first meetings to be held. So it looks like based on what Martin, you know, just kind of discussions with the city, that should be happening in roughly June or July. Um, and then, then we'd be fully approved on both sides <laughs> here in Boston. I guess the other thing I just wanted to update you on is we have done some work on site. As you might have noticed, there are no more horse barns yeah. on the site, as I'm sure you've driven by. So that was work, again, that was approved. And um, uh, we removed uh, 30 plus or minus 33 horse barns. And there's some 
miscellaneous ongoing work uh, going on now, just uh, cleanup work. But I thought real bri really briefly, I'd let Mike Scanlon from our team who oversaw that work, just describe, give you a brief synopsis of what's going on now. Sure, so as Mike mentioned, um, we did begin demolition work in early March. It lasted for about a month and a half, um, and we, we halted work on site to align with the Commonwealth's um, social distancing goals related to COVID. Um, yesterday, actually, we re remobilized our demo contractor um, for about two weeks worth of work. They're basically just gonna be crushing concrete that was generated during the demolition process and milling all of the asphalt on site so that when we do mobilize an earthwork contractor, um, they're able to get in there, easily remove utilities, and then begin construction of the roadways at really a, a pad level site. Um, so we do have about two more weeks of work, demolition work on site, um, and then we'll demobilize our demo contractor and that scope of work will be complete. Okay. Okay, thanks Mike. So um, is there any questions on any, any of that information so far? Michael, this is Gene McCann of the uh, if, if I come down there someday, can I go around the site and look around the site? Um, so it is right now, it's a secured construction site, but we're, I, I guess we can, and I'm gonna let Mike Scannell answer that question. I don't know what our kind of rules and regulations are, especially with COVID-19 at this point. Uh, Mike, if you have a thought on that. Yeah, Gene, so if you wanna reach out to me directly, I'm happy to schedule a time to get out there with you. Um, our demolition contractor right now is very sensitive to some of the regulations that have been enforced on site. Um, you know, they're required to wear a face mask at all times. Um, Non-cut gloves are required by anyone who who um, comes to the site. But again, if, you know, as long as we have on some gloves and a face mask, I'm happy to give you a quick tour of the site. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Of course. So getting to, um, you know, just a little bit of background on this preliminary subdivision plan submission. So we, we previously did have a previous uh, preliminary subdivision plan, plan approved by the planning board. That was back in late 2019. Uh, subsequent to that, we made some modifications to phase 1R. So again, that's the initial plus or minus 1.4 million square feet and five buildings that would be constructed in this initial development phase. We made some changes to the alignment of those buildings and location of some buildings. And as a result, we're now coming back with a revised preliminary subdivision plan, which reflects those changes. What really, there's a couple of key changes. One of those is that uh, the previous location of the hotel um, has moved and, and in its place, we grew one of the residential buildings and we you know, took room out of another residential parcel to allow for the hotel. We'll walk through the details and the plans in just a minute, but that was really kind of the overarching reason behind um, the change in the subdivision plan. There are, were also some minor tweaks to the roadway dimensions. Um, and then we also did incorporate a one-way road uh, along as one of the roadways, uh, which, we, which we really intend to be more of a pedestrian thoroughfare. So we, we, we look to do something a little different there. Uh, so that's roadway C. And Jeff will walk through that in a couple of minutes. But that, that led, those are really the changes. And now we're here before you with a revised preliminary subdivision plan. And you know, sub subsequent to this, our plan would be to follow up just so, as you, just so you're aware, with various um, uh, site plan review submissions to the review committee, including roadways and infrastructure and then individual buildings. And that will be happening over the next you know, four to six weeks. But here today, we're just here to, to discuss the, the revised preliminary subdivision plan. So I guess my question, so Frank, are we showing the plans where we have the plans set ready to bring up on the screen if, if necessary and kind of walk through it at a high level? Jeff Heidelberg from Beals and Thomas, our civil engineer, can walk through uh, the set that we've submitted. Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay. So we're gonna work on sharing our screen right now. Yep, so right now it says that the host has disabled the participant screen share. Is there a way that I can um, be allowed rights to share? Uh, try it now. I just um, added panelists. Are you able to share? Ah, yes. Perfect. Okay, up on the screen. Does everybody see my screen first off? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Uh, this is Jeff Heidelberg. I'm from Beals and Thomas. Uh, we're the civil engineers working on the project uh, on behalf of HYM and MHDC. Um, 
so I first wanted to walk through the kind of overall where we are on the site. So the beginning process, you may or may not recall uh, when we went through this the first time on the northeastern portion of the site, this is where the beginning phase is. This is the first phase uh, of the project. It's uh, located near uh, Beachmont Station, T Station, and it includes uh, some roadways and also subdivision of a few parcels. If I can zoom in a little bit further, you start to see the, there's some slight changes here that have occurred from the last uh, variation that Mike just walked through. Uh, road C is now a, uh, a one-way road. It's a one-way road heading in the northerly direction um, along this line. Uh, we've worked through uh, some design efforts with the deputy fire chief and uh, have come up with a cross section that makes some sense uh, along this stretch for the roadway width as well as the parking. Uh, that road. This here, lot R9, there used to be two parcels here that was split approximately here with a hotel parcel here. Uh, we now have the full parcel being the residential building as Mike discussed earlier. Uh, this property line is off of that residential building and splits out to R1. R1 is the innovation center. It's the office building, uh, retail on the first floor, restaurant space on the first floor. Uh, that's in this location here. And the plaza spans uh, in between these two buildings, the uh, R9 and R1 uh, buildings. So again, this is uh, we're just creating the subdivision here. We're not talking about buildings themselves, but it's still just to give you an idea of why we're doing what we're doing and the changes um, that have that have come up. Um, road B here is Main Street. Along this side of Road B, we have lot R5. R5 was a fully residential building previously. We've now integrated a hotel into this parcel. Uh, so that's where this now has been relocated from and to this location here. Uh, we've also made some adjustments to the roadway widths um, along roads E and D and have aligned this intersection uh, to a, a 90, 90 degree turn from road B onto road C uh, to make a better movement and also for the longer term um, development. Uh, at the previous version, it was just, a, it was kind of a, a swinging turn, a hairpin turn, if you will. Um, it was a little tight. We've, we've kind of straightened that out and allowed for a 90 degree turn here, <laughs> located here. We have um, our plans. I'll just show quickly. Um, we do have our, our uh, utilities as required for the preliminary subdivision plan set. This is just to the west of what I was previously showing. So here's road A, R5 parcel is on this section right here. This is road E. There's a temp road along here that connects over to Tomasello. This is the existing Tomasello road. And here's Winthrop along the top of the, sh top of the screen. Um, we're showing that we have uh, drain manholes, servicing all of this and uh, we'll have sewer that runs along the frontage of the property uh, to get over to the public safety facility where there is a sewer manhole. This sheet here we get a little bit further into the details of lot R5, um, 3, 9, and 1. We do have the utilities shown within the roadway. We have um, you know the the, uh, the sewer, sewer drain uh, water connections all shown. Water is coming uh, off of Winthrop Ave. Um, sewer, I already explained, and drainage. We have some drainage flowing along the frontage of the property, uh, along the frontage of the property, along uh, Winthrop Ave uh, to the Green Creek portion of Sales Creek. And on the southern <laughs> side, we're coming down and tying into what currently was servicing um, the horse barn area, we're repurposing that as the detention basin to service uh, this portion of the project. So we have a, a new outlet servicing uh, this site here. And um, that's, that's general, that's the general overview one. I think that touches upon pretty much everything and I guess we can open it up to questions and comments. Uh, uh, Jeff, this is Frank Stringy. Uh, just as we're talking about utilities, 
it doesn't have to be done now, but be, before the definitive plan was submitted, now on the definitive plan, we're going to have to identify ut a utility easement for the city of Revere for uh, maintenance of those utilities. So we can do it under one utility easement for the whole width of the roadway, or however you guys want to propose it for us to take a look at. But I just want to put that out there. You have to address that in the definitive plan. Mm -hmm. Certainly. You want to go to the roadway right. cross section plan? You have that? Sure. Um, so we have a roadway cross section here, uh, depending on which road you'd like to look at. Road A, um, if I zoom in a little bit, I can probably give you a little bit better of a diagram here. Um, road A, which is just to the west of yeah. Alt, um, R5, is this cross section here. Um, we're showing the cross section with the sidewalks. Um, at that location, you know, we do have uh, a building in the future being proposed over here. Right now, obviously, we're showing some grass and a temp sidewalk until that building does come uh, online later. And hey, Jeff, over here. excuse me, Sorry. Jeff. I don't think we're seeing that. Yeah, we're on. Yeah. The screen's not advancing, Jeff. It's still yeah. on. Yeah. It's still on the okay. previous plan. Let me. Uh, it could be. Tag. Can you see it yeah, now? Uh, yep. I see. Okay, great. So here is the diagram showing uh, the cross sections where they're located. Road A here is just to the west of R5, and this is the cross section of what we have. So um, you can see the you can see the travel lanes. You can see the. Um, uh, Sidewalks, again, as I mentioned, this was that temp area with the temporary um, grass, temporary sidewalk, uh, cross section. I'm going to jump to road C. Is that the one way? Right. You want this? <clears throat> so here's our one way roadway. We've got an 11 foot sidewalk, 20 foot travel lane and 12 foot sidewalk. This, this section here, we div divided up into a road C1 and C2. C1 is located uh, adjacent to the plaza area. We wanted to keep this area a little bit thinner uh, for the travel, um, travel lane plus park without parking because we wanted pedestrians to be able to easily cross um, and go back and forth between the plaza and what is over here, which is R3. Um, on a little bit further down the road, on road C, I'm gonna just jump back here just to kind of orient you. So this is C1 area, this is the C2 area. This is where the R9 building is, this is the R3. So this is where I said the plaza is located coming across to the R3 building. Up here, we've got the R9 building located adjacent uh, across from the R3 building. So that's what this C2 cross section is showing. And we've got the side, again, sidewalks we do have uh, an eight foot wide uh, parking lane based upon discussions um, previously, 20 foot wide travel lane, and then again, the sidewalk on the other side, um, a, a 10 foot sidewalk. There's other cross sections I could walk through, but um, you tell me if you'd like to, to walk through each one. Well, the main cross section we're concerned with is the uh, main street cross section. Is that uh, road B? Yep, so road B. So there's road B that's um, closer to Winthrop Ave and road B that's uh, between R5 and R3. They do change, so it's B1 versus B2. B1, we've got the sidewalk um, travel lanes because there's turning lanes involved once we get that close to Winthrop Ave. Uh, we've got, we've increased the size of this parking lane to a seven and a half foot wide uh, parking space, <coughs> curb line, bike lane and additional sidewalk. We also have further south uh, on Main Street, um, the condition where one of the lanes disappears um, because we no longer have that turning lane, the need for a turning lane. And we now have sidewalk, bike lane, uh, you know, at curb level, bike lane, uh, two foot buffer curb, seven and a half foot parking, double, uh, two 11 foot wide travel lanes, one for each direction, one north, one south, seven and a half foot, 
buffer, bike lane, sidewalk. So same thing on this, on this side as on this side uh, for the sidewalks. Okay. Uh, I, I can interrupt. I, I just spoke to Deputy Fire Chief Cheever. Uh, for some reason, he couldn't find the invite. He's going to try to get on on the call. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure he sent an invite to him because uh, he, if Nick received it and Paul Agenzio, he should have received it also. Paul's in. Yeah. Excuse me, Frank. How, how do you feel about that travel lane we were talking about? Well, the travel lanes are fine. It's the, it's the parking lanes that the deputy fire chief and myself had some concern over as well as the uh, city engineer. Um, You're looking for the full eight feet. Well, we were looking for eight feet. Um, I think the deputy fire chief and maybe uh, he's communicated with Mike Bobrowski recently. I, I don't, I'm not <clears throat> privy to that communication, but I think the, the examples that were shown from other communities were retrofit. It wasn't, uh, it was existing construction. So his feelings here where we have new construction that we should be able to uh, provide the eight foot parking lane, which is also a drop off zone on the main street, B1 and B2. Um, okay. so I don't wanna speak for Paul uh, Cheever, but I, I think he's trying to chime in. Just send, resend Paul his invite. Okay. Michael, how do you feel about extending that travel lane, giving us that six inches? I mean, not the so, travel lane, the parking. The parking lane, right, understood. So. Um, so it had previously for color, um, just a little bit of color on this item. So we had previously been proposing 11 foot, 11 foot travel lanes and seven foot parking lanes. And that's what we, which is consistent with what we propose in Boston, kind of keeping with our over, overarching goals of having consistency amongst all the streets, all the interior streets to this development. It's consistent with what we've showed to shown to city of Boston and uh, the Boston traffic department uh, in terms of a typical right of way. Um, when, when we were approached on this item, when we were, when we were approached on this item, we, we went ahead and, um, you know, the, the request we've shared this with, you know, Deputy Cheever, um, Frank Stringy and others. And we made the decision that we could, you know, that a compromise of, you know, losing six inches from our sidewalk going from seven feet to seven and a half feet in that parking lane would work. So it's something we can certainly study and we're happy, you know, we, we have studied it, we're, you know, we're, continue, we're happy to continue studying it. Really, this is just a question of knowing that there's, there's two things at play. One is that we are, we are, our goal is to maintain consistency with Boston so that as you kind of, this is on the main street, which goes into Boston and the majority of it lies in Boston. So as you drive from main street and Revere and go into Boston, that is still similar kind of there's a similar urban fabric or urban streetscape condition. The second piece um, is really just making sure we have enough room on the sidewalks for street dining, uh, for we have rows of street trees, for benches, for the things that we want that are important and it, that it doesn't feel too squeezed, especially, you know, I, since, you know, even over the last two weeks alone. So for instance, the hotel, the hotel sits, if you can point me their cursor, Jeff, the hotel sits right at, um, Right where Jeff's cursor is, right there. So that's right, one of those cross sections. Um, so just you know, in a discussions with our hotel co-developer, um, they expressed to me concern just this week about how they want to make sure they have ample room for outdoor dining. And in a post-COVID kind of scenario, they're going to be doing a lot less indoor dining and try to create more outdoor outdoor dining opportunities. So whereas you know, whereas they previously might have been thinking about just two tables or you know, one table deep along the side of the building. Now they'd like to go two tables deep across the side of the building, along the side of the building, which is something we're now studying. And so we're studying that at the same time as we're talking about reducing the, the width of our sidewalks. Um, so it's really kind of, and, and also our retail, you know, our broker and our retail strat strategy consultant who's talking to us about, again, same thing with restaurants and restaurants looking for, again, ex extend the best of their ability outdoor dining opportunities. So we're trying to weigh all of this. So we certainly hear um, the deputy fire chief and, and the concerns raised. And we've also heard comments from, um, uh, you know, Paul Argenzio, Bob O'Brien and others um, that, you know, you know, also kind of felt, 
seem to be um, maybe supportive of us trying to maintain that, you know, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but maintaining that, that sidewalk jet width. So we will go back and look at it again. Um, but those are the reasons, that's kind of the background and the reasoning for, you know, how we arrived at this roadway dimension. Michael, uh, Michael, this is Paul Agenzio. Uh, yeah. Just a couple of questions. When you say that sure. the Boston Traffic Commission, so <laughs> the seven or seven and a half foot parking lane uh, has been approved by Boston? So it hasn't been, a, I guess I wouldn't, can't say it's been technically approved because we haven't finished our, our process in Boston. We have, right. you know, as I kind of mentioned, it has been elongated for reasons that have, don't have to do with streetway cross sections, but other, other things in Boston that we're dealing with. Okay. Um, that we think we're now at the end of the road, but end of the end of our time there. But unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we've been held up for our BPA board vote. We have shared the, you know, I shared um, a street section with you, um, Paul. Right. There's a previous person, and then I and then in the recent email I sent you were on that as well. That uh, you were on that email as well. That's consistent with what we shared with Boston and the Boston Traffic Department. Um, Consistently for about two years, the seven foot travel lane, sorry, the seven foot parking lane and an 11 foot travel lane. So we haven't had, we haven't, we aren't yet as advanced in terms of Boston because we're through our master plan approval, but we've consistently shown the seven foot parking lane, 11 foot travel lane throughout all of our presentations. And they've asked for, they've actually asked for every single, right? They've asked, they've asked for cross sections of every single roadway in Boston. And we provided, I don't know exactly how many, because Jeff is, you know, it's more than our master plan or CBT, but it's probably, I don't know, 10 to 12 different roadway sections we presented them okay. um, throughout and, two times. And, so I hope that ends. Right. And, and you had said that you were basing this on Boston's complete street uh, program that, that they've been going by consistently through Boston. So that the, the yeah, so the complete the Boston the Boston's complete street guidelines were the guide for um, for the work that has been been done to put you know to design the roadways, um, and so the, the the Boston complete streets guidelines and also NACCO, which is also another kind of group that you know comes up with uh, parameters as to you know guidelines that are really is the basis of the Boston complete streets guidelines, also references the seven foot. Um, parking lanes, and so these are guidelines, um, not rules, but they do they do have a seven seven to nine feet recommendation on parking lanes. Okay. So, and and I just have yeah. one more question. So this sure. particular street that runs from Revere into Boston, are the buildings, restaurants, is that consistent from one city to another? So it'll look like, or or, or do things change when you get to Boston as far as commercial sites or heights of building or anything like that? So this is our main oh, Sorry, I just got some feedback. Um, so this is our main I think someone may need to mute. Sorry. OK. This is our main retail corridor. Uh, so Main Street in Boston is really the, our retail spine. So there is retail all along Main Street. Um, in Revere, as it goes into Boston, it does cross, once it, after it crosses Sales Creek, it continues with that retail all the way to, really all the way to close to the Suffolk Down Station. So similar feel, res, mostly residential buildings, um, all, all street front retail along every single building. So it's very, very similar look and feel. Um, okay. And that was by design. We wanted to create a, we wanted to create kind of a, a single continuous Van of retail along along Main Street, and so that it would really be a place that someone could get off the tee in Beachfront or walk from the neighborhood and walk along Main Street and have the same similar feel as they walk or drive, you know, into into Boston. So that was the basis of how we put together the, this, you know, these right of way diagrams and in our in our street sections. So if we if we do move away from that, it would mean that just but Revere might have a different, will have a slightly different feel than Boston. And we, we have to figure out how to, how to address that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mike, this yep. is Bob O'Brien. Can I just ask a couple of questions following up on Paul's? I understand sure. there are reasons why this project hasn't been finally approved in Boston, uh, but yep. to the extent that it has been, 
less formally, shall we say, um, BTD has approved the seven feet of parking lane. Has the Boston Fire Department also approved that? So uh, we haven't done a detailed review with the Boston Fire Department of of these of these um, of the of the cross sections. We've we've met with the Boston Fire Department, but there hasn't been an in depth in depth detail with them. Um, but we have had very detailed meetings with with the BPDA traffic folks. I mean, their transportation group within the BPDA, and also with Boston Traffic Department. Okay, I would I would just note in in Paul uh, Deputy Cheever's uh, absence that the view of the Boston Fire Department would probably be very relevant from his perspective. I have to, um, I'm here, Bob. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, sorry. Um, this, the second, I'm sure you'll have a couple of questions too, but the second question I have is uh, a seven and a half foot parking lane is arguably appropriate for regular passenger vehicles. And by the way, everybody I think on this call and beyond values, wide sidewalks, sidewalk dining, all of that. We are all in on that. But sure. the concern that I have heard expressed about a narrower parking lane is that to the extent in addition to parking, there is also loading on that block that that tends to attract larger vehicles, vans, for example, perhaps even small trucks. Uh, and that those are the kinds of vehicles that get very problematic in a more narrow lane. Is that the kind of activity that you expect? Will that be done off that roadway on another roadway? And just generally speaking, how do you uh, deal with that particular issue? So we do have designated drop-off zones and um, that will be in front of buildings along along Main Street or, what, what, or Road B1 and B2. Um, well, some of that will be for Ubers. Some of that will be someone driving in, somebody up at one of the residential buildings or at the hotel. Um, some of that will invariably be, I mean, just again, to be straight and, and forthright, that some of that will be deliveries, right? Um, there will be delivery of packages and there would be a drop, there would be a lane there for them to pull over, drop off their packages and, and keep, keep moving. So, um, you know, it's something we'd have to look into whether uh, you're suggesting we may, maybe we restrict that. It'd be something we'd have to kind of look at to see what the impacts would be. But but we do have the drop off lanes in, again in front of the buildings. Yeah, I mean, if it involves regular passenger vehicles, Uber or otherwise, that's probably not a problem. It's the larger delivery vehicles that could be problematic unless they have alternative ways to uh, access those stores or restaurants. The final question I would have you have proposed seven and a half feet, which would be six inches larger than the parking lane that was approved in Boston. There's been a general principle that what works in one community will work in the other. If we approve seven and a half feet, is it the assumption that that would then be the guidelines for the Boston portion of the road, since as you've said, it's very much the same character? So we would probably then need to revisit um, all of our street right away cross sections um, in, in Boston, particularly Main Street, and work to see if we, you know, what the impacts would be of, of that additional six inches. Um, you know, we, you know, we do our plan again for outdoor dining along Main Street, especially in the center of the site as that portion of the site gets built out. Um, and we would, we would have, I mean, we would study it. We haven't studied it yet, Bob, but again, I think, <laughs> question it would be it'd be something that we'd want to look at because again our like as you said the goal has been to to keep to keep this feeling like a singular development so it doesn't feel like oh well, on the rear of your side it feels this way and then the boston side it feels a different way um but it would be something we would certainly look at is is do we need to now kind of change our parking our parking lane with in boston as well yeah, I mean, excuse the pun, but the relationship between Boston and Revere is a two-way street. You know, sometimes our guidelines, you know, work yeah. for them, sometimes the reverse. I don't think they would, I don't think Boston would oppose it, maybe if that was your question. I think it would be a question of whether we would, just uh, for us to just look at what we currently have planned 
and how how deep our sidewalks are, you know, our setbacks for proposed buildings. There's a lot, you know, there's there's a lot of details there. So I, without just giving a blanket answer, I'm just saying we would certainly study it and see what the impacts are um, to see if it could be accommodated to, you know, again, and still, but, but I understand it could be something that Revere, you know, influences the Boston side. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. <laughs> You're welcome, Mr. McKenna. <laughs> Is there uh, any questions from any members of the board? Hi, hello. Hi. Go ahead, hello. Anthony. Hi, did we ever uh, finalize the uh, entrance how we were discussing uh, the last meeting where all the tra traffic was coming in and going out? So Jeff, why don't you Maybe pull back if you could adjust the plan. And, and it was just about whether once phase one R is completed, where traffic is coming out or during construction. Uh, I think it would, we brought up both uh, subjects there. Uh, our main concern that everything that was coming off Winthrop uh, Parkway. Uh, we, yeah, we, Winthrop Avenue. Yeah, Winthrop Avenue, I'm sorry. So maybe what we could talk about first is construction access. Yep. I just have to wait for Jeff to pull up the plan and maybe it could be a bit. So Mike, uh, which which plan do you want to see? Well, just the one that shows the temp road, Jeff. Yeah. This one? Yep. Exactly. So <laughs> as part of so we are bless you, you know that was. Um, so we are we are constructing a temporary road as part of phase one R. So you can see that Jeff is has his cursor on it. That will be connected to Tomasello. So during construction. That will be, you know, the primary route of access for construction vehicles um, as the final, you know, during the construction of all the roadways. Um, so those wouldn't be obviously accessible during construction. Post-construction, once the site opens, that that will remain available. Um, so we'll, we'll, bless you again. So mo all construction vehicle traffic will be coming in Tomasello. Much of that would be, we expect, Portion of that will certainly be coming from Route 1A, um, heading northbound on route, route 1A, taking a right on Tomasello, then continuing to the project site and taking a right on this temporary road here. Okay. If there's any coming from coming from west on Winthrop Avenue, they would take a right into the site on Tomasello and then a left onto this temporary road. So okay. that's okay. So that's during construction. Now, what happens in the final phase of this? So if we could. I think Jeff's going to slide the plan over and go to a different view. So it does get cut off, but um, so this 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 is our main street. Well, let's yeah, thank you. That's even better. Thanks. So just to orient everybody, you can see Washburn Avenue. You, you know where the T station is to the yep. you know kind of where the Wash Winthrop Avenue is. Okay, so Road B, which is one of the roads we've been talking about, that is our main street. That will be a fully signalized intersection, right in, right out, left in, left out. Um, so that's fully signalized. It will be incorporated into Winthrop Avenue. So that will be one new way into the site. In addition, road A, which is to the left, that will be right in, right out only. So that's really just more like a, you know, a, call it a cedar street from Winter Avenue. So if you, wanted, if you wanted to get into the site here, yeah. you couldn't take a right in. Now, again, because Tomasello is still, we can still access the site from Tomasello. Um, you know, there, there's still optionality there. This would also be a right out too on road A. Michael, it's worth noting that intersection you're talking about between Main Street and Winthrop Avenue also controls access and egress to the MBTA parking lot, does it not? Yes. Thanks for that reminder, Bob. Um, you've been <laughs> you've been you've been a lot of meetings, so you know all this well. Um, yeah. So we are work. We are, we will be working with the MBTA to realign their entrance. And coordinate the signal signal signals there, traffic signals there, uh, for coordination, so that there'll be you know timed movements between the MBTA parking lot and Winter Avenue, and then the road into Suffolk Downs. And that movement is currently unsignalized. Correct, and it's not it's not yeah, and it, obviously it's not a line because we haven't built Road B yet. So yes, no signalization there now. And I and I, I missed it, Tom, Tomasello it's still going to be an active road. Do 
Correct. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, this is Frank again. I, the last time around, the planning board added a condition with respect to that intersection on Winter Avenue, and that signalized intersection that uh, <clears throat> that the uh, uh, traffic impact analysis be provided for that intersection to summarize the impact of that intersection will have on Winter Avenue traffic and outlines mi mi mitigation measures to be implemented on Winter Avenue and Beachmont Square if there's any delays as a result of that uh, new intersection and signal signal there. This one, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, yes, so our concern is the impact it has on uh, backing up Winthrop Avenue to Revere Beach Parkway um, for traffic going to Winthrop and Beachmont in East Boston uh, because it next down pretty good at, at Beachmont train station and you have another signal there. So we wanted to know what, and I, I think the, uh, uh, the section 61 findings may have may have addressed that, but we need to know what the what the results are on the traffic on and impacts on Winthrop Avenue as a result of that new signal. Mm -hmm. so that's something the planning board had put in the last condition or probably put, put it in this condition also for the definitive plan review. Putting that out here. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Are there any any other questions? Uh, hi, this is Nick Reistrom, city engineer. I'd just like to ask a question. Um, this is for uh, the folks over at HYM. Um, with regard to the discussion about the seven and a half foot parking lane and trying to accommodate the, the travel lanes in addition to the pedestrian lanes and the bike lanes and everything, um, has there been any thought about um, modifying the the width of the proposed right of way as a whole uh, to then be able to accommodate you know all of the concerns that we've been talking about so are you suggest so you're suggesting have we have we you're asking if we if we've considered adjusting adjusting the right of way itself I think it's like right so if you Needed. I mean, we're talking about a blank slate, right? You know, we're not dealing with a street that's being modified that exists already or anything like that. We're talking about creating a completely new uh, street, a completely new thoroughfare. Um, if you, you know, if there is a question of, let's say, six inches, and in this case, maybe six inches on each side, uh, has there been any? Uh, thought about looking at expanding the right of way afoot to accommodate everything. So I guess I'll, I'll start with that. So I think at this point, you know, we've we've now completed schematic design and we'll be coming to we'll be submitting to the site plan review committee in about a month or less than a month. We've completed schematic design on four buildings and and some in a couple of those we've actually redesigned. Uh, so based on that, you know, look, it, it, it'd be very difficult for us to make changes in the buildings. Um, and also we, we, we can move the right away line, right? But, and on, and on Main Street, Main Street, we do have a building setback. However, it would really just come at the expense of the sidewalk if we're not gonna change the buildings at this point. If we're, you know, without change, making major changes to taking six inches out of the building that we've designed and are now into design development, that, that's kind of the challenge. I'll just, just, again, to be forthright with you. So I think that's not something we've considered. It would have to be, you know, we, we have to, I think we have to figure it out, I guess. Is the, but that's not one of the options. I think that would, that would, that would probably set us back. Um, it could set us back from a schedule perspective. But is there, yeah. is there is it a combination of things? When you're looking at rowway E and D and A, you know, you, I know you have four lots already designed to schematic, and that was fit you back to the you, but you could push those roads to the west and to the south as far as as far as your right of ways and meet the, meet all your requirements, especially for the future development of the other areas. I don't know how far you are along with schematic design in those other areas, but so 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 the. The road in question then, because we can handle speed, 
the road in question then now comes down to road B. Um, and then just before you answer that, I, I have reached out to Boston Fire. Um, I know Boston Fire had a, a change in their, uh, they had a change in the ship just recently on, on the uh, fire prevention side. Just if, if they're aware and how they feel about this, uh, just because I wanted to see if they've looked at the plan, so we're not holding this up, spinning in circles. If they're like, we don't have an issue, uh, I'll take their lead. So I'm just trying to get them to, to look at this as well. Right, and I appreciate that. Um, thanks, Deputy Cheever. Um, you know, I think, I, I, I understand, you know, some of your suggestions, you know, so we do have on the other side of road A, for instance, we have a, we have a temporary parking lot, which has been laid out um and you know designed at this point or with, with through an design we have studied what's what's going on on the other side of the streets uh, on the other side of road e and road d um we're not into schematic design in those buildings but again it would just be it would just be trying to it would be a question of you know trying to see what the ripple effects are through the rest you know through the rest of the revere side um i'd like to think that we can try to figure this out without making you know just kind of having that ripple effect change through the entire plan that's what that's what i'd love to try to do so i think you know we're committed to try to well we're, we're committed to study it further with you and 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 continue the conversation um i understand you know and per and as as it relates to boston fire that's correct we we have not we haven't had a sit down with boston but we're just not we're not far enough in boston where we've had to you know where we're advancing final kind of roadway drawings right um so that's that's the reason we haven't met with Boston Fire. So we've just really gone through. We're still in master plan permitting over there. Uh, we do we have had much more detailed meetings on I, I would say much more detailed meetings on the roadway cross sections and right of roadway um, the right of ways in Boston through this you know to this point in the master planning process than we did in Revere. Um, so they have, I mean, we've studied, again, shown example roadway diagrams showing every single, I think it was part of the package, the last slide of what I sent you, that level of detail on multiple streets that, that has been shared with Boston and discussed. So they've dug in pretty deeply. And to this point, you know, to this, at this juncture, there hasn't been a concern raised about the seven foot parking lanes, but I have heard, you know, your concerns and, you know, certainly respect your opinions and, and the others on the, on the board and then on uh, within the city of the year. So we're committed to working with you on it and, you know, hopefully trying to figure it out in short order. <clears throat> there any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Frank Stringy again. Knowing that this, this parking lane issue is kind of an open issue, I think the planning board will I recommend that they approve the subdivision, this preliminary plan subject to that being resolved before the definitive plan mm -hmm. is submitted uh, to keep things rolling along. And so when we get to the vinyl vote, I, I think we have to add that condition into it that it's uh, subject to uh, you okay. know, further review. All right. This is Bob O'Brien. I, I would support that approach as well. Yeah. All right, Frank, if you, do you mind just repeating the last uh, sentence you said? Because my son came in and <laughs> he started kind of poking me. Uh, halfway through that, I'm trying to shoot him away. Um, basically, I just basically Michael, uh, reiterating what you said, you know, that you're going to continue to look at this. And by the time okay. you fi file for definitive subdivision plan approval, we would have resolved this matter one way or the other. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. I, I guess the one comment is, you know, our goal is to try to appreciate it, <laughs> try to uh, try to solve it and try to work through it in the near term. Uh, as we are, we have a kind of a detailed schedule that has us, you know, moving forward with roadway and infrastructure submissions as actually as near as uh, soon as tomorrow, uh, followed by uh, building uh, soon. So with, with all with the goal of having us open up first buildings in the first quarter of 2023. So um, our goal is to figure this out with you guys, uh, with, you know, with the group collectively uh, sooner rather than later, but we're committed to doing that. Hi, uh, hi uh, Frank, uh, Paul Agenzio. I mean, it, it seems like this has to be decided pretty soon. I mean, to leave that hanging out there and continue on with all kinds of designs and schematics and, and get further along and then 
you know, in the ninth hour, we were still arguing over six inches. I, it, wouldn't that yeah. uh, kind of place a big so, burden on the uh, HYM or, or is HYM uh, uh, comfortable with that? Yeah, I agree. It, it's to their advantage to get the same resolved sooner rather than later. And I hope within the next week or so, okay. they come to an agreement with the uh, deputy fire chief and, and uh, the rest of the staff on this. But I don't want the planning board's vote to hold this up. I'd like to see this continue, the preliminary plan approval subject to that being resolved as soon as possible. I also think, Paul uh, Argenzio, that uh, there will be discussions at the site plan review committee, which can address this matter and perhaps resolve it quickly. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Yep. One other item uh, that the planning board had on the last preliminary plan uh, approval, and I believe uh, the deputy fire chief has been working closely with the uh, HYM uh, on turning radius <coughs> within the street layout. And I believe they've all they've come to an agreement on that. So that's one other item that we can take off the list if the fire department is uh, <clears throat> is comfortable with what they resolved. So I'd like to hear from uh, Paul Cheevers and, uh, and Mike Babowski on that issue. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, I'm comfortable with everything other than resolving the issue with the parking lot. Like, you know, I still a lot of when you, just to put this out here because you know Paul Gentio brings this up a lot of a lot of times what I see for lands for streetscapes includes the bike lane in the street, not necessarily on the sidewalk. So, so I don't usually comment on it because there's, there's always a little bit of buffer when it's associated with the bike lane is between the parking lane and the travel lane or the bike lane is on the other side of the, of the parking lane. It's, it gives you some play and some buffer. In this case, we're kind of tight. So I'm, I'm going to, before I make a final decision on, on accepting this, I want to at least reach out to Boston. You don't know if we're going to get this and then some Boston comes back and says, Hey, no, we need wider streets. We don't know. So, so we're assuming that Boston Fire is going to be okay. I understand the situation with getting Boston to answer anything right now is very difficult. I understand. So, so go ultimately, will the seven and a half feet work? Possibly, but I think, I think what, what I'm going to work offline with HYM is possibly letting it be seven and a half feet and restricting it to, uh, Vehicles only, no, no, no uh, deliveries, and then that's going to keep those box trucks out of it. So we'll we'll work it out. Let's let's give Boston a chance to respond. Right. So, respond so that being the that being the case, um, so uh, to Paul Genzio's concern, this matter is going to be put in the lap of the site plan review committee, and we we're going to meet on this uh, as soon as Wednesday, and hopefully we can come to an agreement on Wednesday. If Paul has. Paul Chiva has that information from uh, Boston. So we're not gonna let this thing lie. It's gonna put, put in the lap of the site plan review committee. Uh, the planning board will move it along tonight. And the site plan review committee will resolve the, the parking lane issue as soon as possible. Can I make one more comment? Can I make one more comment? Frank, when you, excuse, excuse me, Frank, when you say Wednesday, you mean tomorrow? Tomorrow, yes. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, as a matter of fact. Yeah. <laughs> To make yeah. one other quick comment, and also reaching out to Boston and, and having them respond and not respond, it covers all of us. That looks out for HYM, it looks out for us. Hey, we reached out to you, we gave you a chance. This is what we're moving forward. Now it's kind of on Boston if, to, to, to get back. To they haven't done it. HYM's reached out, we've reached out. So if, if it's, if it's non responsive, then they are where they are, and we have to move forward with good career there. So I would just say that we're, I would just say that we're on board with, I would just say we're on board with the approach of, well, I guess, I guess we're of the same mind to say that we want to resolve this sooner rather than later, uh, later per Paul Argenzio's comments. We can't, just can't hang out there. We have a submission that is actually ready, uh, will likely be ready for, you know, uh, to be submitted tomorrow uh, for roadways and infrastructure. So, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll probably discuss that in much more detail tomorrow morning, which is fine. Um, but yeah, we, we'd like to resolve it and just you know kind of move forward and be all be all the same mind. So for today, for, for today we need a motion a motion to approve this uh, changes in plan with uh, with provisions. Is that correct? 
Uh, yes, it will be lot, conditions. <clears throat> one, of, one of them will be the parking lane, you know, subject to the approval of the site plan review committee. We just leave it at that and we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll handle it. This is Louis Cialoni, so moved. I second. Do we, need, do we need a motion? I made a motion. I'll second. Okay, roll call. Oh, Frank. Someone call, someone call the roll. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I was on mute. <sighs> Uh, okay, motion by Mr. Cerrone, second by Mr. Lemina. The subdivision, preliminary subdivision plan, Suffolk Downs be approved, uh, subject to that modification, subject to approval of the trap, the uh, parking lane with, by the site plan review committee. And uh, on that motion, Mr. Amico. Yes. Mr. Cerrone. Yes. Mr. Del Vecchio. Yes. Uh, Mr. Desimone. Yes. Mr. DeVoe is absent. Um, Mr. Giovanni is absent. Mr. Lemina. Yes. And Mr. McKenna. Yes. So also uh, the approval will be subject to the, the, the remaining conditions from the prior approval, which are pretty generic and they'll be okay. added to that as well. Okay. Okay, so preliminary subdivision plan has been approved with those conditions. Thank you. Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Are there any more business, did, did we, Frank? Did we need to approve the minutes of the previous meeting? No, we didn't. No, you need to do that. Right. You need to do that. Yes. Yeah. We need a motion to approve without meeting. I, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting. Anybody second? I'll second it. All in favor, so all moved. opposed, so moved. Uh, uh, anything else, Frank? There's no further business before the board this evening. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And Thank you. Have a great night. Are there any other meetings? Bye. You'll be notified. Hey, Frank. Yes. A motion to adjourn. How are you feeling? Uh, much better, thank you. Okay, glad to hear it. God bless. Motion to adjourn, everybody say aye. 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 <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, thank Joey you, Ashley. Joey <laughs> okay, bye-bye, Frank. Peppers.